be well served to remember the long and cherished tradition. Every time someone gets up and says I'm responsible for the death of people throughout the world, those were two pretty funny instances that happened over the past week in Congress. The first one is the son of Representative John Rose of Tennessee. For some reason, he thought it would be a good idea to have his son sit behind him while he gave remarks on the House floor, which led to his son making a bunch of faces and just having fun in the moment. After his face-making video went viral, it even landed him an interview on CNN. Using the justice system to engage in a politically driven prosecution and now conviction of a major political party nominee running for president, especially on the charges brought against Donald Trump, should gravely concern every member of this body as well as every American across our country, whether they be Republican or Democrat, for Donald Trump or against him. Regardless of one's opinion of the current Republican nominee, we'd be well served to remember the long and cherished tradition we have in this country of settling our political differences at the ballot box. For nearly two and a half centuries, our nation's elected leaders have properly resisted the temptation to oppose their political rivals through the weaponization of our justice system, equal justice for all. And an overall trust in our justice system is fundamental to who we are as Americans. And those who would destroy that hard-earned trust just to score cheap political points should be held accountable than the law Consider that the DA who brought these charges actually campaigned on, quote, getting President Trump. Also consider that the entire basis for this verdict is the testimony of a convicted felon found guilty of perjury who also admittedly stole money from the Trump organization. Do not allow the Department of Justice to be trivialized as well. Our founders envisioned the possibility that a president could be harassed by political opponents, which is why I continue to argue in favor of immunity for this type of prosecution. Impeachment is the tool the Congress has to hold our chief executives accountable. Congressman, I note that you have your son in front of you this time <laughs> as opposed <laughs> to behind you. Why? Good tip from you, I think. That's probably where I need to keep him going forward. But uh, uh, he was, uh, I had told him before I gave this speech, I said, his uh, three-year-old brother, Sam, is back at home. And I said, you should smile for Sam while we're on the camera. <laughs> and uh, he took that a little further than I expected. I just want to go over, does, Guy, can you hear us too? Uh -huh. Okay, good. What did you think walking into that big room and what dad told you when you're going to be sitting there? Tell him what you thought. You can say it out loud. What did you think? I can't. I didn't hear you. They asked you what you thought when you walked into the house chamber yesterday. Um, good. <laughs> what were you thinking about telling Sam? Sam? Did you spell his name with your hands? Yeah. Oh, is that what he was doing? Is that what everyone was like making jokes of like this? There's a conspiracy theory of what he was doing with his hands. Oh, I'm loving that. Yeah, I thought no, it was just it new dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. Sam. Honestly, by the way, that's impressive. Just in and of itself right there. I enjoy that. Um, guy, <laughs> what did what did Sam think of what you did in Congress? Did Sam tell him, talk to him? He, he thought it was good. He did think it was good. And Congressman, this is also proving any time I bring my children to repeat anything they just told me in private and public, this is exactly what happened. So I'm so glad we were connected on exactly. this front. <laughs> on this front. <laughs> when did you realize, Congressman, that, that your son has, had stolen the show and you now need to go back to the House floor and remake your remarks because no one was listening. <laughs> um, when did, did you have any clue this was going on behind you? I, I didn't have a single clue and not until I was walking off the floor, one of the floor managers said, you're probably going to want to watch that video when you get back to your office. And, and when I saw it, then I knew uh, at least there was going to probably be some reaction. I, I had no idea it would be as extensive as it has been. The next one came during the House Oversight hearing with Anthony Fauci. 
Democrat Debbie Dingell was trying to play the victim card and using her time to question Fauci by asking about the death threats that he gets. As he's talking, you can see a man making faces behind him, mocking him. Well, it turns out that man is one of the mostly peaceful protesters from January 6th, and he actually served prison time for his role in the mostly peaceful protest. This time, he's been found guilty of multiple charges related to the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Jury convicted 29-year-old Brandon Fellows on federal charges of obstruction of an official proceeding and entering and staying in a restricted building. Fellows was among the mob of rioters who stormed the Capitol back in 2021. The judge addressed Fellows' disregard of the court's decision and comments he made about a, quote, kangaroo court and a Nazi court. Um, yes, there have been um, everything from harassments by emails, texts, letters, uh, of myself, my wife, my three daughters. Uh, there have been credible death threats leading to the arrests of two individuals, and credible death threats mean someone who clearly was on their way to kill me. Um, and it's required my having uh, protective services uh, essentially all the time. Uh, it is very troublesome to me. Um, it is much more troublesome because They've involved my wife and my three daughters. At this moment, how do you feel? Keep your mic on. Terrible. Do you continue to receive threats today? Yes, I do. Every time someone gets up and says I'm responsible for the death of people throughout the world, the death threats go up. So if you are trying to, you know, get at me as a public health official and a scientist, you're really attacking not only Dr. Anthony Fauci, you're attacking science. 